Hello, welcome to Edupedia World Video. In this video, we will talk about ancient Roman civilization. Ancient Romans are mostly the ancestors of modern day Italians and other Romans nations like French, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian people though they may be called Romanized nations since they descended from a mix of different ancient people. Their ancestors, that is the ancestors of Romans, came first to Italy from the east and their homeland and cradle of human civilization, Mesopotamia. According to a legend, Rome was founded in 753 BC by King Romulus. It is the famous legend about Romulus and his brother Remus. It is said that certain Italic king Amulius wanted to depose his brother from the throne and destroy all of his progeny, that is Romulus and Remus. They were put in a basket and thrown in Tiber River, but fortunately the basket with babies was saved from water by a woman called Larentia. According to other, later corrupted version of this story, a she-wolf saved him. Larentia saved them and raised them as their new mother, and when they grew up, sent them back to set free and restore their parent to the throne. Afterwards, they founded Rome. This kind of legend, with the abandoned divine child motif, was present among every nation of the ancient world, such as the Greek legend about their hero Perseus, Egyptian legend about Horus, Indian legend about Krishna, and so on. They all refer to the same famous historical event from the most distant past. Try to find out which one it is. The mentioned date of Rome foundation is disputed since various Roman historians recorded different dates for that event. Besides, the most ancient historical sources about foundation of Roman civilization tell us that Rome was founded in much earlier period and not by Romans, but by a foreign king came from East. According to that source, Rome was founded by Babylonians, and its oldest name was not Rome, but Saturnian. In the 8th century BC, perhaps in 753 BC, Rome was only rebuilt and named Rome supposedly after the legendary king Romulus. Historians divide Roman history into three periods. The period of Roman Kingdom, from 8th to 6th century BC, period of Roman Republic from 6th to 1st century BC, and period of Roman Empire from 1st century BC to 5th century of New Era. Period of Roman Kingdom refers to time of Roman kings who ruled after the foundation of Rome in 8th century BC. During this period, Romans waged wars against neighboring nations. The most famous among them were the Etruscans who lived in northern Italy. They came to Italy from Asia Minor and were not related to Romans. Their origins are unknown and their language still undeciphered despite the fact there are preserved inscriptions written on their language. This is the list of the earliest known kings of Rome according to Roman historians themselves. Though king had the absolute power and made all decisions concerning his kingdom, it was not a hereditary kingdom, but elective. And beside him, there was a senate made of 300 aristocrats and nobility that advised him in different affairs. After some time, due to last Roman king immorality and cruelty, Roman people dethroned him and decided to elect two people to govern their state. They were called consuls. That event marked the beginning of the Roman Republic period. Also, due to discontent and revolt of a common people because of high taxes and slavery, Roman government and ruling system was changed even more during the next few centuries. Many political representatives of common people appeared in their parliament and they gained more privileges. Along internal political turmoil, Romans had to wage wars against other tribes who were trying to conquer their city-state, such as Etruscans, Gauls, Greeks, Samnites, and many other Italic tribes during the 4th and 3rd century BC. Romans defeated all of them, one by one, but their most glorious victory was achieved in the war against the Greek city Tarentum, which was allied with Pyrrhus, 
king of Epirus in Greece. The expression Pyrrhic victory originates from his name and means victory with great losses. Though he defeated them in two battles using elephants in his army, Romans finally prevailed in the last battle, the Battle of Benevento, in 275 BC. That way, Romans gradually conquered all Italy. After the conquest of Italy, a war ensued between Romans and Carthaginians. Carthage was a colony in North Africa, in modern-day Tunisia, founded by Phoenicians in 9th or 8th century BC. Romans called them Punici, and those wars are called Punic Wars. There were three of them. During the First War, Romans defeated Carthaginians in two major battles, the Battle of Mila and the Battle of Agatis Islands, while their attempt to conquer Carthage itself was a complete disaster and their entire naval army was destroyed in sea storm. The Second Punic War lasted from 218 to 201 BC, when the famous Carthaginian leader Hannibal came to Italy via Spain and Alps, not across the Mediterranean Sea, in order to surprise Romans and defeat them on their own ground. Hannibal defeated the Romans in two battles, the Battle of Lake Trasimenes and the Battle of Cana. However, instead of attacking Rome after that, he started plundering Italy, while Romans went from Italy and attacked Carthage in Africa. They defeated Hannibal's army in the Battle of Zama in 202 BC, led by Cornelius Scipio, known as Africanus. In the Third Punic War, Romans finally conquered all territories of Carthaginians and destroyed Carthage to the ground. That way, Romans possessed all the lands of Italian peninsula, Sicilia, Sardinia, Corsica, and parts of Spain and North Africa. At almost the same time, from 215 to 167 BC, Romans waged wars in East with Macedonian kings Philip V and his son Persus. They were victorious again and conquered Macedonia. Then Romans conquered the Seleucid Kingdom after the Roman-Syrian War in 188 BC. Greek lands were subdued in 146 BC, and the Pergamon king Attalus III surrendered his whole kingdom in Asia Minor in 133 BC. Afterwards, during next two centuries, Romans conquered the territories of many other nations, soon to become the next world empire, replacing the former Greek Macedonian kingdom of Alexander the Great. Then the Roman consul Gnaeus Pompey conquered the kingdom of Pontus in East, governed by King Mithridates VI in 63 BC, while the other consul and his ally Gaius Julius Caesar conquered Gallia, the modern-day France, in 51 BC. However, after those conquests, Pompey and Caesar went into dispute and started a civil war. Civil wars were frequent in those times, as well as rebellions, like the rebellion of the gladiator Spartacus. In that civil war, Caesar defeated Pompey in the Battle of Parcels in 48 BC and became the only supreme ruler of the Roman Republic, having the authority of a monarch. He was one of the most famous Roman rulers. However, his enemies inside the Rome made a conspiracy and killed him already in 44 BC. His death was revenged by his cousin Octavian and Mark Antony. They defeated Caesar's murderers in the Battle of Philippi in 44 BC. Then again, wishing to have all the power and wealth for themselves, Octavian and Antony started a new civil war, just like Caesar and Pompey. Octavian defeated Antony and his ally, the Egyptian queen Cleopatra in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, and he conquered all Egypt. Octavian became the only supreme ruler of Roman state. He did not want to proclaim himself an emperor. It was still a republic, though he was ruling as if he was a monarch, just like Caesar before him. He was nicknamed Augustus and gained the title Princeps. That is why the time period beginning from his reign is called the Principate Age.
Octavian Augustus conquered many more territories. He conquered Spain, Northern Balkan, and even a part of Germany, although his army was defeated by Germans in Teutoburg Forest in the ninth year of New Era. He was a very popular and one of the most famous Roman rulers, known for his bread and circus politics. This means people will be satisfied if you provide them only with food and a bit of games and leisure. Of course, that will only be a temporary satisfaction and a possible cause of immorality emergence among people. Octavian's reign was nevertheless considered to be the golden age of Rome. One of equally famous Roman rulers and conquerors was Trajan. He conquered the Dacians, ancient people that lived in modern-day Romania, in 105th year of New Era, and waged wars against Parthians in the east, who replaced the former Persians. Roman Empire reached its climax during his reign. However, after his death, Roman emperors began focusing more on defending their vast world empire, since many conquered nations and slaves rebelled against Roman occupation. Likewise, many civic wars ensued among various Roman generals and pretenders for the throne, until Roman Emperor Diocletian came to the throne and restored the former order. Diocletian made many reforms and tried to maintain the domination of Roman powerful state. He had the title Dominus. That is why the time period beginning from his reign is called the Dominic Age. He was also infamous for his merciless persecution of Christians and Jews, so as many other Roman emperors before and after him. So while Romans were fighting among each other for the throne, Starting many civil wars all across the empire, the conquered nations rebelled more and more, and other nations and tribes outside of Roman Empire began to attack them in more aggressive way than before. Then, in the 4th century, a fierce and warlike Asian people came to East Europe from Asia. It was the Huns. Their famous leader, Attila, who ruled in 5th century, conquered all European territories outside the Roman Empire and then began to attack the Rome itself, causing havoc both among Romans and other nations. Trying to save themselves from the Huns, many other tribes migrated to Roman territories, plundering and destroying wherever they came across. Some of them became a part of Roman army and fought against Huns and others, defending the Roman Empire which was falling apart. Roman Emperor Theodosius I tried to save it from doom by dividing the empire into Western and Eastern Roman Empire. But it was in vain. It was too late. Finally, in 476, Rome was conquered by German tribes and the Western Roman Empire disappeared from world map, while the Eastern Roman Empire lost many of its territories. That was the end of Roman civilization and ancient ages civilization in general. There were four major world empires in ancient history. Babylonian, Persian, Greek Macedonian and the Roman Empire. And there were also many other world empires or only attempts of reaching world domination. In every single century of humankind history there was some world conquering power, a nation or group of people. Since that was the case during all human past, the question may be is there any world empire today, or at least a group of people or political organizations whose final goal is world domination? What do you think about that? For the end of this lecture, we will say a few more words about Roman culture, religion and mythology. Among Roman historians, the most famous were Tacitus, Titus Livius and Ammianus Marcellinus. Well-known Roman poets were Virgilius, Horatius and Ovidius, who all lived during the so-called Golden Age of Octavian Augustus' reign. Among other prominent people we could mention were Plinius the Elder, Philosopher Seneca and Orator Cicero. Concerning their religion, Romans practiced polytheistic religion system, as majority of ancient people did. Some of their deities' names are listed here. However, 
in the first century of common era, a new monotheistic religion system appeared, though it was the same as the original monotheistic Hebrew religion. It was founded by Jesus Christ, who lived in modern-day Israel. Romans arrested him and then crucified him because of his teachings and moral life that was not compatible with standard Roman norms and customs. Many people from those times claimed that he was the son of God himself, and that he resurrected after his death. Christians and Jews, that is all monotheists, were constantly prosecuted by the polytheistic Roman emperors. Very often they were thrown together with wild animals into gladiator arenas, such as Colosseum, where Roman people rejoiced watching people, slaves and animals, slaughtering and tearing each other apart. However, Christianity eventually spread throughout all Roman Empire, and the first emperor who accepted Christianity as state religion was Emperor Constantine the Great, by issuing the Edict of Milan in 313 years, although he probably did it from political reasons. Constantine is considered to be the first Christian ruler of Byzantine Empire, which is a 15th century name for Eastern Roman Empire, since he founded Constantinople, the modern-day Istanbul, and proclaimed it the capital city instead of Rome. It was the 330th year of New Era. That would be all. Thank you for watching Edupedia Worldpedia.